What's going on, everyone? My name is Trevor Carlson, host of the Formula Podcast, where we break down and explore the elements of health, wealth, happiness, and achievement with amazing guests from all over the world. And today, I'm fortunate enough to sit down with my old friend and mentor, Lori. Lori Waitchie. I'm the Associate Director here at the John Papa John Center at UNI, and today we're going to talk about student entrepreneurship. The Formula Podcast wouldn't be possible without some uh, some pretty awesome sponsors that are willing to, to support the show. So the first sponsor has been with us for quite some time. That's Lady Boss. They provide women's workouts and health supplements to help women live healthier lives. Now, if you're interested in checking out any of their workouts or their supplements, go ahead and head to theformulapodcast.com and check out our sponsored products page. Now, our second sponsor just got started with us here recently. That's Liquid Web. Now, if you've listened to any of our episodes with like Adrian or Ketsu or anybody that's doing any type of drop shipping or e-commerce, Liquid Web has some e-commerce solutions to help you get a store up and running ASAP. And they were uh, willing to actually give 33% off to people who listen to the Formula Podcast. So when you go to liquidweb.com and check out their products, make sure and type in Formula 33 when you check out to get 33% off. Big thanks to them for, for hooking us up and uh, keeping this show rolling. That's all from our sponsors. Now, let's do this thing. Lori, thanks for taking the time to hang out with me today and yeah. enjoy this nice cup of coffee from one of your one of your students or interns or whatever you call them up here. It's one of our student tenants. That you forced yeah. to make coffee for no, you. No, <laughs> he loves to make coffee. So there's, there's one question that I know every tenant is dying to know that's, that's been up here with you. <laughs> and and it, I think it's time for you to tell them that I was your favorite tenant yeah. you've had yeah. of all time. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> I love you all the same, right? You know, so you're all my kids. Yeah. You're so all we, my kids. We were talking before. We've known mm -hmm. each other for just about eight years. Yeah, crazy. Um, for what exactly do you do up here? I know that you you kind of keep all of us, all the students that you and I, the student business owners, in line. Attempt to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what mm -hmm. what is your actual job here? Right now, I'm the associate director of the Papa John Center here at UNI, and uh, just working with any student that comes in here that's you know has an interest in maybe starting a business. There's a question that I, I hear a lot from from students that are either want to be entrepreneurs or are entrepreneurs, and mm -hmm. it's you know, do I need to go to college for this? You know, um, it's always good to have a contingency plan in place. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if your business isn't successful or as successful as you think it's going to be, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, and if you don't have a degree, you know, what's, you know, what are your odds for getting a good job or whatever? So yeah. I would really like to see my students finish their degree. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Doesn't always happen, does yeah. it? No. No? <laughs> I, I think it also has to do with, I mean, maybe just thinking through, like, okay, if this doesn't work, what am I going to do? Absolutely. And it might, not, mm -hmm. it might be that you gain enough skills from your business to get a good job, but if mm -hmm. not, then right. what's your backup? Right, like, what's what are your you backup do? plan? So, yeah. mm -hmm. so how did you end up here? I, I've never asked you this before, so I'm really curious. Yeah. So um, ended up here in the Cedar Valley area because of my husband um, with his job. And um, I was actually, I just came off a of tax season. I'm, as you know, I'm a CPA. Mm -hmm. um, and I, my goal was to not work for the rest of the year. I didn't want to even look for a job until January the next year. And my son was going to school here at UNI. Mm -hmm. And he came home. And he said, Mom, I found the perfect job for you. It's like they took your resume and wrote the job description. And I'm like, yeah, right. You know, and I read it. And I'm like, oh, maybe, you know. <laughs> so uh, it was a position mm -hmm. for, um, at that time, I think it was a program assistant here. Mm -hmm. And I applied. Got the job. Yeah, started July 2nd. Six months before I even wanted to start working again, I was back at it. Yeah, yeah. and shaping the the lives and businesses of young entrepreneurs at UNI for. I don't know if a I'm shaping <laughs> much. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely a part of of the process. It, it took about a year or two to even figure out what I was, what my role was, and yeah, that's kind of all part of the process, though. But, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite part of working with the students up here? Oh gosh, the students. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, Even though you want to kill us all sometimes. Well, you know, <laughs> just, you know, being able to just possibly play one small role in someone's life. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you're doing this to me, but, you know, it's just okay. um, just to be able to um, be a part of someone's life. What do you think the, the hardest part about your, about your job or working with all these students up here is? Right off bat, the first thing that came to my mind is not telling you what to do. Yeah. And about the only time that I'll step in and say, no, you absolutely cannot do that is if it's going to be illegal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or if you're violating some sort of tax law or whatever, something like that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of hard. And, and I know sometimes students really want us to tell them exactly what to do. And I just had to bite my tongue, mm -hmm. you know, and just say, well, what do you think? Yeah. You know, what do you think? I, I've thought a lot about this lately because I've been, you know, traveling quite mm -hmm. a bit and put myself in a lot of situations where, you know, there's no, there's no backup coming. Right. Like you have to kind of, you're on your own. Yeah. And for me, for, I think from business wise, I think it's been an extraordinary, like helpful thing. Um, but it's also kind of showed me that in the past, maybe I leaned on other people to make mm -hmm. decisions for me mm -hmm. instead of me kind of figuring out on my own. Yeah. And I, I think it's such an important skill set to have as, as a business owner, entrepreneur, even as like a fully functioning adult, yeah. <laughs> as being able yep. to rely on yourself. You have to, absolutely. And the only way you can do that is <clears throat> if you're kind of like, this is up to you, you got to figure it out. Right. Um, you're also the only person that can take care of yourself. Also. It's true. And it's yeah. important to, because I found that as a business owner, just as like a, just even as a person, you don't really realize the like what you put your body and mind mm -hmm. through when you work mm -hmm. that hard. <laughs> you can do seasons. Yes. I always say you can do seasons. I always relate it to a tax season. You can hit it hard during the tax season, but then you gotta give yourself a break. Yeah. You know, you can't do it forever. What do you say to the students that come in like perpetually burn themselves out and think that their life has to be? Um, well, you know, we just, you know, I, t you know, what are your long-term goals? Mm -hmm. You know. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now, 20 years from now? What does that life look like? Who's part of that life? Yeah. You know, um, if you're visualizing other people as being part of that life, well, then you need to figure it out mm -hmm. because that's not going to happen if you continue on. Yeah. You know, and you know, and that's the other thing that I like about our program here at the college level is the fact that. You can learn these lessons now, and they're not quite as costly, mm -hmm. you know, because there's usually not a lot of big financial risk yeah. um, to it. Um, so the quicker you can learn these lessons, the easier life is going to be. But, you know, until you live it mm -hmm. and learn the lesson yourself, I can say it as many times as I want, and it doesn't make the impact until you walked it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what do you think that your, your students that you know, you've seen have, have higher levels of success, what do they all seem to have in common? My mavericks. Mm. My ones that they're going to make it happen no matter what. Yeah. They're going to do it no matter what. Um, come hell or high water, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know? Um, you know, so the people are really just going to go after it on their own, and then they would just come to me for questions when they hit a hurdle they couldn't get over. Mm -hmm. But the people are really coming and just looking for me for the answers. Yeah. They're not, it's, you know. Yeah. You need to have that oomph, you know what I mean? That I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna make it on my own no matter what. And those are the ones that really succeed. So you, you said that Mavericks are, are a big character trait of your most successful mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else on top of that? If someone wants to be successful right off the bat, I think being able to have the initiative mm -hmm. to go after and make it happen, but really have that teachable yeah. kind of spirit and be willing to and open to receiving advice and guidance, mm -hmm. you will probably avoid more mistakes. Yeah. You know. So the big mistakes that I see happen <laughs> are people that just run forward and make it happen and all of a sudden, you know, when they get the notice from the IRS or the notice from the lawyer, then all of a sudden they come to Lori and I'm like, I if we would have discussed this, you know. Yeah. But it's you know, we can always fix it. You know, yeah. it, it, everything's pretty much fixable unless if you did something really bad, but that hasn't happened yet, yeah. which is good. 
Um, so, but again, and I look at that and I go, well, geez, if they would have talked to me first, but then when they learn that lesson, they don't repeat it. Yeah. Right. So maybe it's okay for them to go and all of a sudden go, ooh, you know, I crossed a line that I shouldn't have crossed. Now what do I do? Yeah. You know, so. They probably don't want to get another letter from the IRS or anything right. like that again. It's a little scary. Yeah. Yeah.